Hello and welcome back to Physical Geology and today I want to go over the fossil identification lab that I posted for you on Canvas. So first let's look at Canvas. It'll be under this module Interlude E which deals with fossils and evolution and I do have a series of lectures. I want to make sure you watch those lectures, take notes on those lectures. I introduce some of the techniques to identify the different fossils that we'll be looking at. Then you'll have some study questions that go along with that lecture series. You'll see that there's a quiz, a couple of quizzes based on the readings from that, cha uh, that chapter in your book, Interlude E. And then I have the, the lab here. And so what I want you to do, I want you to look through the fossil identification tutorial. So this will open up the tutorial and you'll, you'll see you can go through all these steps. You can go through the geologic time, taxonomy. So once you go through the assignments, you'll see that there will be a, a quiz based on that identification or that tutorial. And then once you take the quiz, then you'll be ready to take the lab. And so on the lab, you'll see I'm creating those videos now and I, I'll have, there'll be a pre-lab and the pre-lab, you'll see there's some questions mostly based on that tutorial that precede this section here. And then you'll be asked to fill out this table. And this table is really table one. Later on in the, in the lab, when you actually do the experiment, they're gonna ask about table one and they're referring to this table here. This will be table one. And then you'll download the lab here. And so here is the lab that you'll download and you'll see that in this experiment, you'll be identifying the samples. And I'm gonna show you those fossil samples here in a moment on the document camera. And there are seven samples total. And then you'll need to print the graph paper because I do include graph paper here, you see at the bottom down here. You wanna print two of those to make the, the spaces to draw out because we're gonna be drawing these, these fossils. And then you're gonna use your phone or some way to take pictures of your, of your drawings to include with this lab. So again, you're gonna be dealing with the graph paper here. And let's just read a little bit here. Then you'll be, make the drawings and you're gonna take pictures of those and you submit those with your lab. And there was another important part here where they're talking about table two. So table two is the data you're gonna record and that's, that's gonna be down, down in here. So that's table two for the identification of the fossils. But in here they do ask about table one, right here, using table one. So table one again will be the table that that's in the pre-lab so that's what they're referring to that's from the pre-lab right there all right so uh, let's take a look at the document camera here the paper that i provide to you is basically one inch is 10 squares and so what i've done i've divided this into four boxes and each box you'll see is on the on the landscape side here it's five inches on one side and three and a half inches on the other side up there so on one sheet you can draw four fossils so obviously you need two of these and uh for the seven fossils you have and you'll just have one one space here that's left open and so the first fossil that we're going to look at this fossil a this one here and what the first thing they want us to notice is to do a measurement and remember if an inch on this if 10 squares is one inch, you can see that this fossil covers a distance of at least five, 10, about maybe 14 boxes there. So there's five, 10, so it's, it's 1.4 inches in length. And if we go side to side here, it covers five, 10, about another 14. So it's about pretty, it's round. Um, so the radius is 1.4 inches by 1.4 inches and then another important thing to notice about this if we zoom in on this specimen you'll see that it has these interesting sutures you can see them on the shell here they they kind of curve back here and kind of whirl back this way right you can see these kind of sutures going back and going over this way and then on this particular fossil my predecessor has actually kind of drawn some of these whorls, these sutures. You can see how they kind of, well, here's a good, another good, the other side shows them pretty well. You can see how they, they whirl back. And so this is a good indication. The other important part of this fossil is when you look at the symmetry of this fossil, note that it's gonna have the bilateral symmetry. In other words, I can cut it in half this way and have mirror halves, but I, can, but I cannot cut it in half this way. Now, I would not have mirror halves this way. So it, it has bilateral symmetry, and uh, this is fossil sample A. Now let's look at sample B. Sample B, in this case, these are a series of, looks like, they look like disks that are all stuck together. If 
you look at the side here, you can see there's a, a little, like it was part of a stem. So this is actually a fragment of a much larger organism that probably stretched out a good 10 to 15 inches. And this organism, when it was living, it lived attached to the sea floor. So it had some sort of hold fast or anchor onto the sea floor. And when we measure it, if we, if we do this, the size here again, uh, remember here, uh, that's five, it's about one, about 11 boxes. So it's 1.1 inches in length. And you can see in terms of width, it's going to be about, if we count the boxes, one, two, three, four, five. So it's half inch in width. So half inch in, in, in diameter of the disc, and it's about 1.1 inches long, right? So when you draw this one, you can see it's circular, right? So the diameter is about half an inch, and it's 1.1 inches in height. And again, this is, again, part of a much larger organism, and so this is sample B. Sample B. Now for sample C, here we have a, a larger organism. And this one, the first thing I notice about this one, it looks like a shell. There are two halves to it. But the first thing I notice is that the, the two halves of the shell, the top half up here, is very different than the bottom half. The bottom half has, so in other words, the symmetry does not go through the shell this way. In fact, the symmetry will go through the middle. So this would have a bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry and we see that in terms of its so this one in terms of its size if we go uh, across here so it's half inch one inch 1.5 and it looks like it's about two inches two inches in length this way and if we start here and go up it's a half inch one inch one and a half about 1.7 about 1.7 inches going in this direction it's about Again, two and a half inches wide or so, and it has, has a certain height here, 1.7 inches. Right, and then the other thing to notice about this, it, it has this pretty dramatic difference uh, in kind of this, almost like this lip. And again, if we look at the back here of this fossil, so it would, it would anchor in the back over here. And so you can see the two halves of the shell here, but the, the top half is, is, is very different than the bottom half, right? So again, looking at your fossils, see if you can identify what this organism is. So there's, there's a side view there, and here's the front view here. All right, so this is one of the specimens that's gonna be in your, your identification data tables. So this is sample C. Now sample D, so sample D is kind of shaped like a horn. And if we look at it uh, in terms of its symmetry, this is an example of one that would probably have a, a radial symmetry. In other words, I could probably, I can, slice it in half and have mirror halves in two different directions. So I talk about the radial symmetry in my video lecture. So this one seems to have radial symmetry. And if we measure its, its height here, it's about half, half inch, one inch, one and a half, about 1.6 inches in its height, 1.6 inches. And in terms of its width here, it's about one inch wide, right? It's about one inch wide because it covers about 10 boxes wide and about 1.6 inches tall. And again, radial symmetry. And th when this thing was alive, it was anchored onto the sea floor or rocks in this fashion here. And so this is an organism that you will find in your, in your identification keys as well. So this is sample D. Now sample E, probably looks like an arthropod, if you know what an arthropod is. Uh, but one thing I noticed about this one right away is that, it, that it's, it's, its nose up in the front is very large, and it goes all the way to the front of the organism, all the way to the front of the organism. And then when I look at, at its eyes, it does have the, the compound eyes that are coming up there. And again, it has that cephalon, the head, right very unique cephalon and this should help you um this this organism is is in in one of your data tables you should be able to recognize what this organism is and so if we look at its size we'll measure its length here so it's half inch one inch one and a half about 1.8 inches 1.8 inches high by about let's see in this case we have it's about one point Little, about 1.1 inches wide. So 1.1 inches wide. 
So here another organism. The key to this organism is look at its cephalon and the, the front of the cephalon, the nose goes all the way to the front, right? All the way to the front. So this is sample letter E, sample E. Now sample F is, a, is another one of these organisms that we saw, but this is a little bit different. Its sutures are different. If we look at its back, you see its sutures are gonna be different. And this is one you can find in your data tables as well. And if we look at its size here, here in terms of its height, it's gonna be one and a half, about one point, again, 1.7 inches in diameter. 1.7 inches in diameter. It's about 1.5 inches wide here as well. Uh, and so again, this is another one of those organisms. It was a swimming organism in the ocean. Take a look at it this way. And you should find them in your data tables. Uh, again, this is going to have the, the bilateral symmetry as well, bilateral symmetry. And finally, the last sample, sample G, is this guy right here. And this sample G, again, it's, it, it has two, sh two shells. And if I can make it out this way, you can see there's a, a bottom shell here and a top shell here. And this guy, the two shells, they're, they seem similar, but clearly the, the, the bottom shell is much bigger than the top. So again, it's not going to have a symmetry going between the two shells. This is going to be an organism that has a symmetry going bilaterally through, through the shells this way, right? So bilaterally. And this organism, this, this particular organism is in your fossil key. So take a look at its smoother shell. Again, a much larger bottom shell than the top shell here. And then if we measure its, its width, it's about a half, about 0.8 inches uh, wide, 0.8 inches wide. If we count the boxes, this would be got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight, about eight inches long. So it's about eight by eight. And then you can draw them. Again, this is sample G with the bilateral symmetry. So when you're, when you're drawing these and you're going through these, you can pause the video so you can get a more accurate look at these organisms. But anyhow, that's the fossils, and we'll stop here for now.